Want to take a look behind the scenes at one of Disney's best parks, Animal Kingdom? Well, I just watched the sixth episode of Disney Plus's new Magic of Disney's Animal Kingdom from National Geographic. So stick with me and I'll break it down after the intro. Well, hello there. My name is Jeremy and welcome back to Freeform Disney, where I talk about all aspects of Disney, from the animated movies to the theme parks to Star Wars, Marvel and Pixar and the TV shows and everything else in between. And that is why it's Freeform. And keep coming back every day for new daily content. If you're not subscribed yet, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Today we're watching the new documentary series Magic of Disney's Animal Kingdom. The sixth episode is called Perry's Prickly Pregnancy. Nice little bit of alliteration right there, PPP. So off the bat, we know one animal we're going to see is the porcupines today. And hey, here's what went down. So first, we didn't go to our porcupines off the bat. We went over to our Sumatran tigers again. This time, we were looking at Anala, who was our second Sumatran tiger we got to go ahead and see. Now, I love the tiger, so I'm not complaining, I suppose, on that one. <laughs> Well, we got to see Anala get to play, quote unquote, and try to find a frozen bone in the pool. Well, Anala was really a bit touchy about the water. We never actually did end up seeing her get the bone. She keeps going for it and startling herself with the water. And eventually said, screw that, I'm going off and doing something else. Oh, poor Anala. Oh, I, I do love a piece with Anala leaving Keeper Megan at the end. I'm bored of you, human. I'm off to go do other things. Pay more attention to me next time. And then we got to also see some more of the training that they do, in this case with Anala. So we got to see some of the work they do for paw care or to be able to see the teeth better. So we saw them training Anala to go stand at the fence wall of the cell, which, again, it's pretty cool to actually see these kind of behind-the-scenes pieces, too. And I think it's the first time in the series that we actually went ahead and talked really about how the whistles are used and how they're used to bridge to reinforce behavior. Certainly we've seen the whistles used before, and if you understand that, you already know how that works, but I don't think they mentioned it before here. And then we get one last fun piece with Anala. We've got four keepers bringing in this giant old pumpkin toy slash puzzle in there. It's got three balls of meat in it, and... Well, yeah, Keeper Dawn we hear from a fair bit here and super excited about Anala and loves the dagger, even if she doesn't quite seem comfortable on camera. But it's great to see all these Keepers and cast members going ahead and talking to us and sharing their love for the different animals they work with. And Anala is fun to watch move around the pumpkin and seems to fairly quickly get one of those meatballs this time around. And hey, that's really it for Anala here, so not as long as I might like, but then again, we've already had a Sumatran Tiger, so that's okay. Let us move on to the star of this episode, Perry, the Prehensile Tailed Porcupine. Now, as the episode title probably gives away, well, we're all talking about a pregnancy this time, so we come in on them being suspicious that she's pregnant, so it's time to take her off to the vets and go check it up and see if she is. And we get another comment about keeping covers over the carriers for certain animals while they're being transported to help keep them calm. So Perry's another one of those. And hey, Dr. Natalie's back in here again. And then we've got Shelly the technician. And uh, is this the first time we've actually identified a tech? We've certainly had techs in the background before, but I don't know that we've actually ever called one out by name. Which is an interesting little note right there. Well, anywho, this is Perry's second pregnancy. So, yep, she's pregnant, as, of course, we all knew from the title of the episode. And then we've also got some animal managers in there. We've got both animal manager Lori pops up, as well as animal manager Missy, who we saw just the other episode with the aardvarks. Now, I'm not sure what the actual background structure is as to how all the animal managers work and everyone else. Clearly, the vets cover a lot of different animals, which is why we keep seeing the same vets over and over and over again. There aren't that many of them, it appears. But the animal managers, I'm not sure, but it looks like Missy at least is the animal manager for both the aardvarks and porcupines. Who knows? We don't see as much of the animal managers in here. Sometimes they're just background, sometimes we identify them. Well, anyway, everything was good here, but 
we come back later because Perry's not doing so hot. And so it's off to the vets again, but this time we check in on Dr. Ryan and Dr. Dan again, making our full tour of the different docks today. Well, there was nothing too serious. They found her to be dehydrated. And hey, the sneezing? It was actually a good thing because you wanted more of the sneezing to get rid of some hardened mucus. Hopefully you're not eating. Lovely thoughts. But hey, if you're eating, I got even better stuff for you later in this video. <laughs> well, anywho, we keep moving forward in time. I don't know how many weeks or even months pass over this. Because again, they were shooting for months and months. So onward, forward through time. And we actually pop in through the night vision camera here, or low light camera at any rate. And we actually get to see Perry give birth, which was really neat to see, by the way. And then we get to see during the day, too, or, or day, daylight, I should say. See the new baby porcupine, tiny red and pretty, and her tail already hooking on the bars. And I think this was her first time that we saw Dr. Deidre. I'm wondering if that means she works a night shift and we just don't see her as much? Not sure. But hey, everything was good for both mother and porcupine. All good. We also get to go ahead and see that pair one last time there. And, ah, uh, fun. That was actually how we closed out the episode as a whole, too. But not how we're closing out this video, because we got more to talk about still. So off to Stark the Steambok, which a Steambok is a type of small antelope, for what it's worth. Now, this is the cutest animal of the entire episode right here, as far as my money's worth. And actually, this also ended up being a much more dramatic piece than, well, certainly than I expected at first. We got to see plenty of keepers, as usual. Rebecca and Ashley were the two main ones here, and we talked with them a fair bit in there, and just, oh, always the excitement from the keepers is just worth so much. But anywho, we apparently come in at the beginning of this, and it's just a few hours after Stark is born. So we get to see them go ahead and look at Stark the first times, bottle feeding Stark, which apparently they do every four hours for a bit. Also building the bonds with the keepers. And again, just so bloody cute is Stark. Although problems do start to arise. So we pop forward a few weeks later, and there are really some problems with the front limbs, apparently, a deformity of some sort. And they're trying to straighten them using kinesthetic tape. And, well, Dr. Natalie pops in here and, well, she says some positive news that it's improved by two degrees and talks about being encouraged. But you can see it in her face that she's clearly pretty worried about this. And, well, we come back three weeks later, I think it is, to go ahead and see if anything's working in the exercise. But, well, you want to talk about how worried Dr. Natalie was, we brought in a specialist. And that's Dr. Andrew, who is a large animal surgeon, so it is time for surgery on Stark's two front legs. So apparently what was happening was Stark's front legs just weren't straight the way they were supposed to be because the bones were growing faster than the tendons for some reason or another. But hey, at least this is treatable. In other words, we cut the tendon on each leg, and that will then allow the legs to fully extend. So yeah, definitely some surgery right there. And... Well, it works. We get to go ahead and go forward another few weeks, get the bandages off, and hey, those legs are straight, looking really good there. And Stark's just off and about and moving so well, and as always, cute. And we also get to see Dr. Natalie positively beaming because she is so happy with the results of this. I don't think we have seen her that happy at any point that we've seen prior to this. Probably also goes along with all the worries involved with Stark 2 right there. And hey, we close that out with watching Stark walk around even more. <laughs> oh, hey, if we could put in more footage of that, I'd watch more of that too. And then off to our fourth species of the episode. This time we're off to the southern white rhinoceros. This is, by the way, a different species of rhinoceros than the one we actually saw last week's. Last week we had black rhinos. Now, the white rhinoceroses are actually considerably bigger. They're actually the second biggest land mammal on the entire planet. So a little bit bigger than those black rhinos. Now, I love this part we get right early on because one of the white rhinos, Helen, is just sharpening her horn on the pickup because apparently she loves pickups for that. Common occurrence, I guess. Now, that's it. If you're one of the cast members, are you really sad to be stopped by a white rhino? I don't think I would be. <laughs> <laughs> well, anywho, 
we get to hear Keeper Jess just gush a bit about Dugan, who is a male white rhino, great personality, and just in general about how sweet the rhinos are. And Dugan is the little piece we really get to see over here in the White Rhinos because Dugan is turning 24 and we get to see a big old birthday party for him. And wow, all the Keepers just got together on this. A whole big team of eight of them putting things together, including this big old fire hose toy. Now, sometimes you just have to wonder how much of this is for the Rhino and how much is for the Keepers who love them, right? Or for any of the other species we've seen, of course. And of course it's both. <laughs> You mean you just listen to all of the excitement and joy that they all had as they were watching Dugan check out the cake and then and then finally over to the fire hose and they're so excited for him to go check it out. And yeah, definitely, as they said, they're really hoping he enjoyed it and they know they certainly enjoyed watching him. And I've said this before and I'll probably say it some more and we still got two more episodes after all for me to talk about it. But I love how much we highlight the cast members here, and I never even knew how much I really needed that in this series. Until they started doing it. Highlight that I did not expect coming up in here. And you might think we're done, but no, today is another section where we have five different species coming up. I think only the second time we've actually done that. Now that means we get the African painted dogs in here, and oh, they're, they're cool. Although... I've got to tell you, it's our shortest section. We only visited them one time. One of the problems with having five different species in one episode. And hey, one of the cool little things we got to see, other than seeing all the camaraderie and the fun of the painted dogs, is we also got to go ahead and see Keeper Kendall head off to give Prima the zebra a little bit of a cameo in the episode and collect some of her poop. Because then we took Prima's poop and brought it back over to the painted dogs and time for the painted dogs to roll around in poop. <laughs> Just like the hyena, they love the scents and rolling around in stinky things like poop is great. And there was also an interesting comment in here while talking about the painted dogs about making sure not to single any of them out, which is part of spreading the whole poop out and the food out when they go ahead and do that. Because otherwise, you could get one of them in trouble with the rest of the pack? Yeah, that doesn't lead to good things, we'll say. Yeah. Well, anywho, I, I, it was a really short section. Not a lot more to talk about there, so that was it. That's the end of the episode, so I'll tell you, it was not my favorite episode today. But it was definitely another really solid one. Probably some of the best excitement I think we've seen out of the Keepers in a few different places. And I do love seeing more species, but I think it's probably better to stick to four or less in an episode. Because we just got to spend so little time with the painted dogs, and I was a little sad about that. Did love the cameo, though. Now, next week, we've been teased with getting to see a little teeny elephant. And hey, I'm fine with going back to elephants in that sense. I mean, especially because we're seeing a tiny one here, so it really feels a bit different. Although, again, so many different species to see. <laughs> They're getting repeats. Oh, it's painful at the same time. Two episodes left, and I am still waiting on cheetahs and, well, also the hippos, which we saw teased actually a couple times during the course of this episode, along with a whole bunch of other species we haven't seen yet. Don't know what we'll get for the rest of the season, but I do hope there's future seasons down the line. And hey, with that, what about you? Who was your favorite animal this time? For me, it's a close one, but I'm actually going to go with Stark. I'm very tempted to say Anala, though. Oh, and also, hey, did you like seeing five species in an episode, even if it means a really short section or two? Do you agree with me or disagree there? Let me know down below in the comments. And thanks so much for watching. If you liked the video, help me out, give it a like, a share, and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you back here tomorrow for another new episode of Freeform Disney. Have a magical day and may the force be with you. Always.